Well, time to start getting a little maintenance done on the boat, and this is not the way you wanted to start it out. Yeah. I put this up on the community tab, and um, we were getting a few comments. There's obviously water in the lower gear case here, the foot of the motor, um, and that's probably due to uh, the output seal has gone bad. And we kind of see the magnetic plug on the drain plug. Didn't look too bad. The mechanic told me that looked uh, about right. Yeah, it's nothing to be concerned about. But we drained out the oil, and yeah, when it started rolling out of there, uh, uh, I mean, maybe compare it to chocolate Yoo-Hoo, chocolate milkshake, whatever you want. That's just uh, not the way you want to see. And this is something I typically do every year. At least change the, the gear oil in the lower unit every year. Um, so hopefully this is a relatively recent addition <laughs> to the gear case is water um, and it hasn't done too much damage to the to the gears we'll get this out and drain it out now a lot of people are telling me uh, you know what's going on with it yeah we figured out and I will tell you this this is a project that I just don't really like to take on myself just because it's a big lower unit. It takes a couple people to kind of know what they're doing to get this thing separated. So this is a job for my mechanic. I'm gonna let my mechanic take care of this, uh, putting a seal in it. And of course, while the, while the foot's off of it, we will install a new water pump kit. That's something I try to do every couple of years, make sure that the water pump is reading. I did add a little oil back into the gear case just to make sure that it was topped off. I didn't want it sitting in there, those gears exposed. So we moved on to the engine oil, um, getting ready here. And uh, I do this with an extractor. These engines do have a drain plug down low, but you got to take a lot of cowling loose to, uh, to drain it. I find it works out uh, just as well for me just to get the extractor stick the tube into the dipstick hole and then you pump this thing up and what that does is it creates a vacuum in the uh, containment vessel there and it pulls the oil out of the oil pan through the dipstick tube you're going all the way to the bottom of the of the oil pan yeah sure it might not get it all out but i contend you probably not getting it all out when you drain it through the drain plug. And we'll take this and we'll check it. The only disadvantage here, and I do do it every now and then, is I will do it out of the drain uh, just to check the magnetic uh, tip on the, on the oil drain plug to check that and see if there's anything crazy going on there. But we're going to pull the oil out and this is a four stroke motor with an with an um, oil filter on it that's why we're, we're pulling oil out two strokes is this is something you would not be doing we're going to spin off the uh the old oil filter here get it off and um, one thing i believe in is putting the filters on hand tight because if you get in a situation where you gotta you gotta take them off or do something else and it's the same with fuel filters and oil filters I try to do it by hand um, I hand tighten them and that enables me to loosen them up by hand it's just something I've done for years and I've never had a problem I've never had one back off uh, so that's just a, something I do. Some people may may not agree with me, and I get that. It works for me. One thing I did here differently is I went ahead and added the date. I try to change the oil in this engine twice a year. I'll, I'll do it once when I start, and then about midway through the season, I'll change it again. 
Uh, so about every six months at least. So I'll know, kind of know when that date is. With the oil filter on, it's time to pour five quarts of oil back into the engine. So we've got some nice fresh oil here and we're going to put that back in get it up to uh, the level that it needs to be be at for uh, for the dipstick and it's like the, I want to say that the manual calls for like 4.8 quarts or something like that I put 5 in it Maybe I overfilled it a, a bunch, a little bit, but I don't know. It uh, it didn't really seem to show up there as a overfilled condition on the dipstick. I want to show that to you guys here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but it's right there where it's supposed to be, right in the safe zone. We'll get that done. Grab the funnel, pull it out, put the cap back on it. And we're going to call the oil change on the engine on the power head done. Again, I'm trying to do what I can do to the motor um, because my mechanic is just really stressed out this time of the year. Everybody has got boats in for service over at his place. And I didn't want to just take it over there for him to spend a day on it. Saves me a little money, saves him a little time. And to be honest with you, he'd rather not mess with little stuff like this. My guy is, he's told me do what I can when I can. So I do it. Uh, we'll change the fuel filter here. And this is the, the secondary filter here on the system just before it goes into the pump, fuel pump here. Little fuel filter. Um, I do have another filter that I changed really that is... Bad, but, uh, Coming off the fuel tank, this. a water separator um, filter. Seems Change like that one as well. Just there looks pretty good. give it the motion. It's not something I did notice there in the bottom of the uh, fuel separator tank. It had a little bit of water in it. I have found that's kind of a normal thing. As the fuel tanks on a boat sit and atmospheric pressure changes, that tank will kind of breathe. As that pressure changes, it's going to pull atmospheric air into the tank through air vents, which occur, have to occur on the tank. And when that atmospheric air comes in, it usually has a little moisture. It has a tendency to collect, um, and it will right. sink to the bottom right. of the tank where it's picked up. Right and that's what, the, uh, that's what that filter is designed to do, and it worked. It's time for a change of batteries. The batteries have gotten very weak, so we uh, grabbed a couple batteries and changed those out. So we'll start the season with uh, some fresh power. Always a good thing to be able to have the engine spin over when it's supposed to. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know, one thing I, I, I just, it's a habit of mine. Before I head to the ramp or the launch, or get my boat in order, I want to power up my batteries and I want to hit that switch and just make sure that engine fires. I, I shut it off real quick, but I just want to make sure it fires before I go through the process. You know, getting the boat off the trailer at the ramp or at the launch and then figuring out you got a dead battery is just, it's just not, not the way you want to start the day. So uh, that's just kind of one of the things I do on my punch list before we put the boat in the water. Make sure, make sure the battery's charged and, and at least it'll start over. Now I did have one of the trim tab motors. This boat has electric trim tabs and one of those electric actuators had cracked. It allowed salt water to uh, get into the cavity, got into the motor and it quit working. And so I decided it was time to replace that. So this is the process I went through to get that 
trim tab actuator changed out. wasn't really difficult. Uh, the new uh, the new actuator is it's uh, it's had some upgrades. That's obvious when you when you look at it. You can see, but it still has the same mounts. Fits exactly the same. So I went about the process of getting that changed out. Went pretty well. I had to make some electrical connections inside. Um, cleaned up the outside here after we got up with a little scraping on it. Got a little acetone, wiped down where the unit mounts. Did this because I wanted to make sure I had a fresh surface to apply my 4200 i didn't use 5200 use 4200 uh, 3m product to seal this back up so i fished the wire back through this was a pretty simple process here just taping the um, the new wiring to the old wire and i had to have a little help i was inside of the boat pulling and uh, i got some assistance from somebody to help push the wire from the back that helped out and we were able to pull that wire right on through without any trouble and get it inside once we got inside made connections with the um, shrink butt connectors we have a good watertight waterproof seal where those connections were made and trust me before you make that seal Kind of put those wires together and test your switch and make sure that the actuator is working in the direction that it is supposed to work. But we got that pulled in and I'll show you the process here of, uh, of course I was inside the boat at this point. You get a little help here from the outside helping to push it. And we worked it through there pretty quickly. A little flattening of the wire. Pretty much seemed to see once we got the move you know i might have might have been able to actually put something in here to help help this wire slide through and this was this was the worst part of it for me um simply because it, it was something i just couldn't do um, by myself but once we got it going through there it went uh went pretty easy I'm ready to get the boat in the water. Um, it's starting to warm up here. And uh, every now and then, guys, you got to, you got one of these, you got one of these boats. Yeah, you got to do, do a little maintenance on them from time to time. And we're applying that 4200 to the, to the mount and getting everything ready to be screwed back in place. I made sure to go in those screw holes as well as putting some of that 4200 around the threads of the screws that mounted, uh, screwed this mount into place. I wanted to make sure that those holes get, get sealed as, as good as I possibly could. Just trying to keep the water out of that transom as much as possible. I'm anxious to get out and have a boat with fully functioning trim tabs again, though. It's going to be, a, be an exciting part of my first trip out.
Last thing we got to do is Beautiful. hammer the pins into place at the top and the bottom of the actuator. And this trim tab is going to be ready for work. VHF radio quit on me last year. It uh, lost the display. It just wasn't putting out very good. So decided to replace that and replaced it with the same style of unit. It's been upgraded uh, for better uh, the screens changed and it has some other features on it. This is the process we went through to change out that and get that taken care of. Well, you guys finish this up. Let me tell you, thanks for watching, and uh, leave us some comments. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, and most of all, hey, we want you guys to stay safe out there.